Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're creating a text illusion effect in Cinema 4D. This tutorial was brought to you by CG Shortcuts Pro Membership, where members get access to Cinema 4D, Octane, and Redshift courses, project files, models, materials, discounts, and even a private Facebook group, as well as lots more. Become a member today and take your Cinema 4D skills to the next level. Visit cgshortcuts.com forward slash membership. Now let's get back to the tutorial. This tutorial was requested by one of our CG Shortcuts Pro members who wanted to know if this effect could be recreated in 3D. And this is actually from the OK Go music video, The Writings on the Wall. So let's hop into Cinema 4D and see what we can do. We'll start by adding some 3D text then under the Object tab, I want to center this, so we'll change the Align to Middle. And I also want to work at rough real-world scale. This text is pretty massive by default at 2 meters high, so let's knock that down to about 30 centimeters instead. And you can make your text say whatever you like, but I do find making it as short as possible works best. So I'll just go with two words for our example, the first of which will be C4D. Then I want to pick a decent font. And I've also found for this particular effect that thinner fonts look better than thicker fonts. So let's go with an old favorite of mine, Montserrat Semi Bold, which looks like this. Then I wanna make sure the letters are touching each other so we can create a nice compact shape. So if we show the 3D GUI, we can now tweak each letter separately. So if we start with the D, we can just click and drag this closer to the four until it's slightly intersecting. And we'll do the same for the four. So it's slightly touching the C, like so. Then we'll give this a bit more depth, maybe double the height to something like 60 centimeters. Okay, so that's the first bit of text. So let's write something for the other angle. Let's rename this to C4D, and we'll make a copy of that and name it Pro. And change the text to say Pro. And again, we wanna make sure the letters are touching like it is here, but to fill this little gap, let's just bring the R a bit closer. Okay, let's make both words visible and we'll switch to the front view. And I just wanna make sure all the letters are also the same height. And I can already see that the O is slightly larger than the D here. So let's hit Shift C to bring up the commander and we'll grab a guide and just move it up in line with the top of the letters. And we can't actually see the guide yet because if we switch views, it's pointed along the wrong axis. So we could just spin it around, but what I might do instead is over here under guide type, let's change this to plane. And if we just move our plane over a tad, we should be able to line this up nice and easy. And we can see which parts are poking beyond the guide here. So back to our front view, we need to shrink the O down a tad. So let's grab pro and select the O and to scale it down vertically, we can click and drag this arrow here until it lines up with the guide at the top of the D. And it looks like we might need to do the same to the C as well. So let's grab C4D and the C and scale that down as well. And I think we're about ready to go into the next step now. So let's hide the guide. And I wanna center our two objects in world space. So if we grab both of these, we know that they're both 60 centimeters deep. So if we go to the coordinates and offset this in the Z axis, negative 30 centimeters, which is half of 60, that should pop right into the center like so. So now we'll bring in a null, which will appear at the center of our scene. And we'll put the second bit of text, which is pro inside there. And we'll grab the null and we'll rotate this. So pro is over this side. So I think we just need to bring this around to 90 degrees. And now we're almost there. Let's also put C4D in the null as well. So we can rotate the whole thing together like so. So now comes the best part where we combine the text into a single object. And we're going to use the volume builder for that, which we can also place inside the null. And we'll put the text inside of that which gives us a big volume blob at first because we need to adjust the resolution in our volume builder first. So inside there, let's lower the voxel size to one, 
which at the scale of our objects is probably still a bit too large. So maybe let's try 0.06 instead. And that's looking a bit cleaner. But by default, it's just combining both objects into one. But to get our text illusion effect, we need to come in here and actually keep only the intersecting parts of the text, which we can get easily enough by changing the mode to intersect. And now we pretty much have the effect we're looking for, where we have a single object that says C4D from this angle and Pro from this angle, which is actually the name of our new Cinema 4D course, if you're wondering. But there are a few things we can do to tidy this up a bit. And it does look like we're getting a bit of clamping down here on the C, so let's fix that first. Let's disable the volume builder for a second. And yeah, we might need to bring the bottom of that C in as well. So let's switch to the front view again and grab that text. And we can bring the baseline up on the C by clicking and dragging here. Then we'll need to compensate by shrinking the height back down as well. So let's show the guide again. And yeah, we'll squish that back down a tad, like so. And now if we go back to our perspective view, we can disable the guide and re-enable the volume builder. And we've now got a nice curve instead of a sharp edge. So I think the overall shape looks good now. But the next issue we have is the jagged edges along the curved surfaces, which is probably due to the underlying mesh. If we disable the volume builder again and show the geometry lines by hitting N and B on the keyboard, we can probably see what's causing that. Let's hide Pro for a second. And you'll notice these lines correspond to those jagged edges in the volume. So to smooth this out, we just need to add some more subdivisions along here. So I'll grab the text and down in the point section, I think adaptive mode should be fine, but we might need to lower the angle to add some more subdivision to our curved edges. So let's drop this down to one degree, which gives us a much smoother curve. Which if we now enable this, should give us a much smoother volume as well. But we've still got that same problem back here, so we might need to do the same to the other text as well. So we'll grab Pro and do the same to that. And that's all sorted now, so we're almost there. At the moment, this is still a volume though, so we won't be able to render it until we convert it to a mesh. And we can do that super easily by grabbing our volume builder and adding a volume mesher to the mix. And if we hold Alt when we click that, it should automatically be applied to the rest of our setup. And if we zoom in, you can see that we're now getting a nice dense mesh that we can texture and render. So we can turn those geometry lines off for now. And I think the mesh is looking pretty good, except for maybe these sharp edges, which also look a little bit jagged. And I think we might be able to fix these back in the volume builder by adding an SDF smooth modifier which is probably a bit too smooth, and I don't like what it's doing over here either. So let's try a different smoothing operator. I think mean curvature might be best for those edges. And that looks a bit better. But let's try increasing the iterations to six. And I think I'm pretty happy with that. So we've basically got our text illusion now. The only issue is that it's a little bit hard to read because of the distortion in our view. So let's use a different lens to flatten this out a bit. So we'll add a camera and look through that. And the focal length is currently 35 millimeters, which is very wide, which is why we're getting a lot of distortion. So to flatten this image out, we're better off using a long or telephoto lens, like a 300 millimeter, for example, which will also zoom us in a tad. So let's just frame this up and look at this flat on. We've now reduced the amount of distortion and our text is much easier to read. So all we need to do now is grab our null and if we rotate this back and forth, we can transition between the text like so. And I think we can call this effect done. There's a link down below to this exact project file. And if you need all the Redshift lighting and materials, you can also grab the render ready project file from our website. That's it for now. I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, give it a like so we know what to make next. Or just let us know what you need help with down in the comments. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button 
and click on the bell to be notified when we post new videos just like this one. You can find loads of CG training, assets and resources on our website cgshortcuts.com or become a member to access exclusive premium content. That's it for now, here's a few more videos you might like.